call the order. City of Trinidad Planning and Zoning and Variance Commission, regular session agenda, January 10th, 2023. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank all the commissioners for being here tonight. Roll call. Leone? Here. Spain? Here. Coker? Here. Matarano? Here. Norris? Here. Rolo? Here. Okay, uh, we're going to public comments. And Michael Yarnum is going to be on. Yes, but I think gonna, I'm going to have to turn it on downstairs if you could wait just a moment. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to give us a few little comments. He's going to be on the 23rd for our work session. He said he ain't going to keep us very long, so I'll let him do a talk and then we'll move on. Pass the hat in the meantime? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can, and then uh, it doesn't seem like there's anybody out there, though. <laughs> we hadn't had supper Okay, Michael, we got you got the floor. Can he hear us? He's muted. minutes from the last meeting, so we're going to defer the minutes till the next meeting. New business. Okay, uh, public hearing, staff. Um, so, our first public hearing is for uh, Holy Trinity. Holy Trinity 201 North Convent Street and 237 Church Street, Trinidad, Colorado, 81082. Review of a conditional use permit to allow housing on the ground level. Staff. All right. Um, so this is the uh, Holy Trinity Apartments on behalf of Mount Carmel Wellness and Community Center uh, and Kip Hampton, LLLP. Is there going to be a representative here tonight? We should have a, a few representatives okay. on the line. Uh, Kyle Hansen, we'll step down here as well. And uh, Kyle Hansen is our contestant. And Tim, I'm Tim Lamb, I'm General Counsel for Abandon and No Cold. And I'm Jerry Stone, and I'm the Operations Manager. We can't really understand it, Chris. Uh, yep. Kyle 
Hanson, Tim Lamb, uh, Gary Fenneman. Gary Fenneman. And anyone else? That's it. Okay, Chris, it's up to you. Okay. This applica this application is for a condi conditional use permit to allow housing on the ground level in the historic preservation zone district. Uh, conversion of this is conversion of vacant school property into workforce housing at the locations of 237 Church Street in Trinidad, Colorado, 81082 for a building for a hostel and 201 North Convent Street, Trinidad, Colorado, 81082 for a building for an existing building for apartments. Lot one encompasses a 55,000 359 square foot building for residents and lot three which consists of 21,807 square feet of parking. Um, the current zoning is historic preservation and this whole um, entire square footage or uh, Holy Trinity has been subdivided previously. So uh, the primary uh, use that we're looking at today is is apartments on the first floor, which is not permitted under our code as for historic preservation. I let me think if there's any other. They have been. Uh, the uh, church has been publicly noticed I think uh, everything else uh, there was a phase one and a phase two I believe uh, environmental testing done and um, the applicant can speak about the rest of the project and answer any questions. Okay. Okay, open the hearing. Who wants a talk representing Kip Hampton regarding this project? Who wants to talk? Uh, Mr. Tim Lamb. Okay. I will. I'll, I'll take. I'll start, and then Kyle can give you the details. Kyle, the architect. Um, this particular project, um, obviously, the old Holy Trinity School and the convent. Um, we're we've been working with the city um, on this um, to create apartments, uh, 34 apartments, and um, part of what we need to have that many units. We need to be on the first floor, and the way the historic district set up um, is you generally retail or something on the first floor. Um, we don't feel we need the retail for any reason, and so far the city officials we've been working with have agreed with us. Um, we, uh, you know, we have some asbestos cleanup to do in there. We have an EPA grant that we've applied for for that, and it's, it's basically the housing need for workforce housing in Trinidad is great, and we would like to be able to develop as many units in there as possible. Um, and so the 34 units is what we've got designed in the old school. Just a quick, quick correction, it's actually 32 units, not 34. No, no, it, it actually is 34. There was a design that actually took some space out to put in a bunk room that would be adjacent to the hospital or the hostel, um, but it crosses what eventually will be a boundary line, and so 
So it will revert back to the 30, to 34. Okay. Here. Anything else you so want to bring forward? Go ahead. Just, just this particular, you know, um, change of this conditional use, conditional use permit is really necessary to what we, what we're trying to do with the city there. Um, it's, uh, as I say, we've had full support from the city on this. Uh, we've even got um, some a potential grant from the city for some of the units um, that we've been discussing with them, and they have approved thus far. So it really is. This, this whole project is about the city of Trinidad and the workforce housing um, in the downtown area. Uh, Gary, anything else you think we need to talk about? I think, I think you know, sometimes it's confused with something more of what the type of housing that was developed by um, Art Space, which was a lesser income. This is, this is based upon affordable housing, not low income housing. And we'll be able to house folks like that work for New Elf Mine. Uh, we've got a letter of support there. Uh, uh, some of the staff from Mount San Rafael Hospital, uh, you know, the uh, uh, Evergreen, are, their incomes are high enough they can't qualify any of their employees to go into the art space apartments. This is a this is workforce, so people on that uh, 80 to 140% AMI range, which in the city housing um, review, I think Michael may or may not be on the line here. The gap is primarily in that 80 to 120 range. There's, there's virtually no housing available that's at that quality and scale currently in the inventory of the city. Anybody else want to come forward with any information? Okay. Questions? Um, um, I have a couple. Go ahead. I would like to know how many parking spots that you have for this. And also, I would like to know uh, when you say affordable, what is the economical range of the employment of uh, income. So parking, if you can answer that, Todd. Parking. Yeah, I'm going to pull that up right now. They got plenty of parking. Mm -hmm. And Chris, the, uh, the site plan that we sent you, it's 28 right here, 28, and then... Uh, yeah, there's a tabulation on the side plan. I don't know what is that. They got bicycles and stuff in there, but so that's... It's so hard to read. That's 15. Yeah, 15, and then this is uh, 13 down there, and then mm -hmm. that's bicycles, I can't really tell. It's really hard for us to read. <clears throat> Chris, you want to inf information on that? You want to bring that up? Does have a total. There's a uh, 63 parking spaces. Parking provided on site: 22, one per person for the just about one and three quarters per unit. Right. There, there's 48 for guests. There's four for staff. There's uh, 32 living units. Um, the parking. There's 22 sites. Um, it looks like they're pretty close to covering the parking. And keep in mind that there's a one-way 
directional road going through here. <coughs> it is going up Convent Street. Um, so. Is he going to answer? Is he going to answer Tony's? No. As far as the parking oh, goes, have it's, we have it for 32 units, so the parking might be a little bit different for the 34. Do you get that final calculation? Uh, so it's 1.5 units required for living units, which puts us at, is that 50? If, if we've got 34 units, we're providing 63. Right. So we are exceeding the requirement. Yeah. What was the second part of your question? The second question was the economic, uh, oh. the range of uh, income. I do believe he said he was, they were targeting the medium income. So Which was the actual, eighty? Yeah, but what is that? Gotcha. Michael, could you could you maybe speak to that that income sure. level that are eligible under this? Can you guys hear me? Yes. 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 Sorry, I'm having I'm just having issues. So I'm having to use a phone to call in. Um, the the one person income at one hundred twenty percent is fifty nine thousand. The grant that uh, this would be receiving out actually allows for up to 140. So it, uh, unfortunately, the new table that Chapa just released doesn't have the newest AMI at 140, uh, but that would probably be about 74,000 a year. Uh, a family of four at 120%, again, which, which is a little bit lower, is 89 or uh, 98,000 a year. Uh, so they're, this grant is unique uh, that they're seeking because normally they the day to day restrict AMI on a, on a project like this to 46000 a year, which I know this developing group was very mindful of not wanting to do uh, low to moderate income, being able to offer that true workforce housing as a development. Uh, this is a unique grant that the state's offering that's allowing higher income. But uh, yeah, again, that, that amount is uh, 120 for one person, 59000 and for four-person families, it's nice. So the, the rents will be rent controlled under the uh, Department of Housing. And um, currently, the allowable is probably higher than market. And so we will price it to market. Um, but there is room above that should the economics of trend that change significantly. Is that fair, Michael? That's correct. It's, uh, right now, like uh, for a one bedroom at 120% AMI, it's over 1800 a month, um, which the allowable rents are not keeping, are higher, much higher than the market. And I'm seeing that throughout my region uh, that I service for housing needs, uh, that the AMI rental limits are substantially higher than, than what the market will bear. Um, part of the grant that they're applying for, they will actually have to submit to, to uh, their, their rent rate. And so I, 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 well, they won't be the grant unless they're competitive with the market rate. So I think they're, they've done that research and the needs assessment also provides guidance on what those numbers are. Answer your question, Tony? Yeah. Question? John? No, at this time. Good. Oh, I have, I have some questions. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I've already defined what the, the workforce housing, <clears throat> what y'all are meaning by that. I appreciate y'all uh, sharing that so that I can understand exactly who y'all's target is. Uh, can y'all hear me now? Uh, can y'all define what y'all mean by hostile area so that I can completely understand what y'all's intent for that is? 
So there are two projects. One is the affordable housing. The hostel, I don't know if that would be considered retail, I would assume. Um, but it would be a uh, kind of a mid-scale hotel. Uh, what, what we've got there is, if you go into the old combat, uh, I believe there's about 30 10 by 12 rooms that the nuns lived in. So the way we see this is developing those into into uh, rentals, you know, apart, not apartments, um, uh, daily rentals. So it'd be like going to a hotel, but at a much lesser price point, uh, being maybe in the $80 range, $90 range. And we see that need coming as, uh, as uh, Fisher's Peak develops and there's a lot of tourism, um, bicycling that's happening here in town, the, the gravel grinders and the, the development of uh, mountain biking, uh, that would have a uh, storage for bikes. There would also be a uh, small um, food and beverage section, which could be utilized by the folks that are in the apartments as well. Uh, but think, think of it of, of, of a, a really nice midline hotel uh, without the higher price point. Without the amenities? So the space you have that makes it more like a hospital, there's no bathrooms that would be in the individual rooms. There would be a bank of bathrooms on each floor that would be shared facilities by the, by the overnight tenant. Okay, thank you. Um, that's that's a good answer on that one. Um, can you tell me how many of these 34 apartments are actually existing on the ground floor, floor level? What's the count that's not on the ground floor level? Most of them. Can you repeat that question? Two, three. How many are on the ground floor? So we are speaking about six units. Nine, nine units. Nine units total. Well, there's, there's actually multiple levels to the. I think because you he asked, I think he asked the question just about the the, the, the ground floor. Yeah, yeah, I just want to know which ones apply to the CUP. What are we actually so, speaking of? Should be nine uh, units. Yeah. Okay, so. So that brings me to the next question: Can this project continue without the CUP being granted? If we were to say that we're not willing to allow this CUP on the ground floor dwellings, could this project move forward? Did you hear the question? Is the answer no? I think he's froze. Something's going on. Shake I think your, we're froze. Shake your head, yes or no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dang, that must have been a good question. <laughs> stop, stop. Chris, you're mm -hmm. muted. I don't know if that's intended, so we can't hear anything that's being said there. Okay, do I need to repeat the question? Is that what I'm needing to do? Did you, did you get the question, or do you want Mr. Spain to say the question again? I don't know if he can hear us. We can, we can hear you now. Can you hear us now? Did, did did you hear my last question, sir? 
did not. Okay, uh, my last question was, if we decide to uh, not grant this CUP and not permit these nine units on the ground floor, uh, could this project still continue on? I don't believe so. We're working with the uh, Department of Housing on a, a, a grant to make this reasonably affordable to do. Um, in, our, in our capital stack, um, we're looking for Mr. Tamino to put about four to five million of his own money in with no expectation of return. Uh, uh, we've got a loan that we'd be taking from the bank and a pretty substantial grant request from the Department of Housing. The, the cost per square foot, we just need to be able to spread it over a, a reasonable number of, of units. And um, developing that into retail space, um, I think would be problematic based on the fact that the floors are at all different levels. Um, it works pretty well for apartments, but to put any kind of real retail space would be pretty hard. Hmm. See, that, uh, that actually brings me to my next question. As you said that uh, y'all don't need retail, uh, and uh, you know, I, I kind of wonder why not add retail to the area. It seems to me like adding retail to the area would improve the area and, and benefit everyone, not just your community that you have going on. Well, I think right now from the city did a uh, determination of need for workforce housing. And I think if I remember my bill, it was 98 units. Um, over the period of the next 10 years with this area we're filling is the largest gap of that. So I, I agree I with that. We're, when you need um, housing for businesses to grow, uh, I think it's pretty substantial. I think retail space along uh, main and commercial, there are a lot of vacant spaces that are still available, uh, which are not suitable for housing. I, 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 you know, we're, we've developed the marketplace. We've got nine different entrepreneurs in there. We've got space available on Main that we're leasing. And we've got uh, 13 partners with another seven in development in the Champions building. Um, you know, I just, I, I, I have to, I have to see it from, uh, the city's point of view also and I have to understand that's what good what is good for one has to be good for all so if we allow you this CO, CUP and we allow ground uh, dwellings then we have to allow that for others in the historical district as well and to me that's that's really hard because that's not our goal for that area it's not our goal to have that become a residential area, we were we were allowing upper floor dwelling to work on our housing problem, but we still wanted the business aspect from the downstairs, and we still wanted to promote that area for business. Um, so that's that's just some of my reservation right there. Is that uh, you know we we and we had other intention for that area. Uh, as far as business goes. Uh, also, you said you had full support from the city even though it's not uh, in compliance with our code. I'm kind of a, a little worried about that. I feel like they maybe have misled you because we wrote a code, you know. Uh, the council wrote a code and if you've had full support from the city encouraging you that this was going to go through, then we need to address that. Uh, because that's not the way that it works. Um, I see that your expected new vehicles to the area are 63. Uh, that's, that's a big change for that area. Um, I'm a little concerned about the, about the area being overloaded. Um, I also would like to know uh, what areas were changed in the hostel 
on the proliferant plans that allowed you to bring the other two units back into play so that we can have an updated idea as to how it'll lay out. And that'll be my last, I'm sorry to. That's it, that's your time, that's your time. I believe Kyle and you can maybe speak to that there's a bunk room that was added to the uh, to the hospital side, but it penetrates into the area that's within the school. And we're, our initial was 34. We had looked at adding a bunk room and we just removed that and we're going back to the apartment. Okay, thank you very much. Your turn. Oh, my turn. Okay, so I have questions on the hostel section. You know, I, I, I honestly didn't quite understand what this was, so I did a little looking up, and I brought some copies. Of course, I can't give one to you guys, but it's the meaning of hostel, whatnot. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. I'm just going to read. So the, the meaning of hostel, when you look it up, it's a noun. It says an inexpensive lodging facility for usual young travelers that typically has dormitory style sleeping arrangements. Sometimes offers meals and planned activities. Um, also could be called youth hostel. But below that, it also states um, chiefly British would be a supervised institutional residence or shelter as for the homeless. And I think that just reading some of the, um, you know, uh, meanings that in the dictionary or whatnot, that kind of, for me, I want to, first and foremost, you did state that you were targeting a certain part, right? A certain type of person. Would that be correct? And you were saying that it would be a price point of about 80 or 90 you know, dollars a night. Yeah, I, but this is you also hospital, you also state I think we can use internally. I don't know if it would meet the definition that you're you're using here. It is it is not like a teenage traveling kind of a Well that was one. I, I there was there was many, but I guess where I'm at, I mean what questions that I have is um no, I just lost my train of thought. Um, you also stated that it was like a hotel. Do can a hotel that was your term be attached to an apartment complex? Does that require a different CUP or or does that require any other stuff? That would be a question for you, Chris. Yeah. For for staff, is that does the hotel? land in another section, can it be attached to an apartment complex? Fire There's code. nothing in our code that states it has, it can't be attached or de detached. Okay. They probably need two meters though. So for fire code and, and all of that, it would be equal across the board? I can't speak on behalf of the fire chief and, and the fire code. I don't. I'm just speaking on behalf of Chapter 14. Okay. Code. Because there's actually nothing in the code when it talks about the hostel section. There's actually nothing in the code that talks about hostel. Right. And I think Correct. that's you know. So when we use the term hotel, or you know, we use these different terms, you know, when I try to look things up to because I want to understand what's going on here, what what the true you know what the use is going to be. I, I want to understand, and I'm not getting full understanding of this. That's all I have for now, but there might be more. <laughs> Do you want to have some more information to Mr. Coker regarding his question? Well, I'll be able to speak to that briefly. Um, if we're looking toward the building code, 
the International Building Code in a hostel falls under transient housing, it would be an R occupancy, similar to the affordable housing, also an R, R occupancy. Um, we are separating these two programs along the existing building separation. We've got three separate buildings, so the hostel program will be contained within one existing structure. Uh, the fire separation required between those two uh, will have to be addressed during our construction document design um, and as well as egress. Absolutely. When I look at the plan though, the plan has doorways that come from the hostile area. And I know this is a like a comprehensive plan beginning stages, but the plan does show doorway entries into the apartment, you know, into the living quarter section of this. Yeah, there are shared common spaces which would exist uh, mainly within the hostel structure, but also in the apartment structure. Uh, upon further code study, we may have to include fire barriers um, to kind of control the flow of traffic. Um, some of these doors will be exit only, for example. Um, there, there's gonna, there's a proposed shared lobby uh, that that would service both the hostel and uh, and the apartment units, but the apartment would also have uh, a separate lobby entrance, so they don't always have to go through the hostel portion of the building. Is the hostel section also is, is it three levels? Correct. With a basement. No basement. No basement on that section, so it's just the three levels. That's all I have for now. Did I roll? The only question that I had, because I too looked at the code to see if hostel was even allowed anywhere in our uses, and I don't see it anywhere in allowed uses. Did I I'm referring it? to it as a hotel. But it's not a hotel. hotel. I, think it's hotel. Not a hotel. it's not a hotel. Not a hotel. I think a hostel internally was our term, but I think it's, it's a hotel. Well, hotels have individual rooms and bathrooms. With amenities. With amenities. Yeah. Hostels do not. You said bunk rooms. Right. So it's not even in the code as it stands. That's my biggest, my biggest concern. I love, love, love the idea of housing. I love the plan. The hostel has me concerned. Good point. So, we if the, if it's not in the code, is it a no right away, <laughs> or is it a yes because it's not defined? Can you do a condition? Does does the hostel play? Does it have impact on the other grant money that you guys would be going after, or is that only? For the for the uh, apartment sections, two, two different grants. The the one for for asbestos mitigation is all three. The Department of Housing is all three for the school. I didn't hear that last part. Can you repeat that last part? Only for the school. The Department of Housing grant for the apartments is only for the school. That EPA grant that we're working with, uh, there's $1.2 million uh, asbestos and lead paint problem in the facility. And we're trying to get as much of that covered through the EPA um, super fund to bring that up. Yeah, but won't that be covered no matter what the end use is? Couldn't you get that grant money no matter what, no matter what your end use is? It doesn't have to be for a hostel specific. It, no, it, it doesn't. It's that building. The EPA is not uh, specific to the future use. While we have to declare what we're intending to do, EPA is so, just wanting to get the building cleaned up. So you could, you could put more apartments or the retail space uh, so that it complies with code 
and still get that grant money to be absolutely clear? Uh, so, I'm guessing you're questioning the amount of money that we take the hospital and make it more permanent. Yes. Do something else besides hostile. I don't know. I would think if I think the hospital is manually, I don't know if it's if it's uh possible. I know that the right now we're running right at uh almost nineteen million dollars. We've got some back. Yeah, somebody's mic's on that shouldn't be. play back what I'm, I'm actually understanding it and hearing it, is uh, <clears throat> your cost per square foot was uh, way too high to make a, a profitable business off of this on the apartment so you put in the hostel area which allows you to sell space more and at a lower margin and bring the, the with less uh, repair and bring the cost per square foot down is the reason why the hustle's there? Yes. Wow. Well, I mean, the hustle also does provide a, a it, it does provide a, um, a source of housing for the gravel grinder folks, which, you know, they're coming in. I mean, people that stay in hostels, um, you know, they, they put up with having to share a bathroom for the purpose of getting a break it, and staying there, so it's going to be a, a younger, a younger um, a population that's going to be yeah, using other, that space. The other thing so. we to the city about uh, is that is uh, we're seeing it with our hotel that we're building. The cost of uh, subcontractors that we're importing into the market. You know, we're trying to do things local as much as we can, but when you bring in drywallers and concrete you know, people, we're putting them up at uh, the pizza. And the, it's a really substantial increase in the cost of construction in Trinidad. It's right. about a 25% premium to what we see constructing in Colorado Springs or Denver. Uh, so one of the things we've talked to the city about is the hostel, we could even uh, advertise that it could be a um, an area for um, for tradesmen that are coming into work in uh, businesses around town that are you know developing their properties and not be such an expensive place for people to stay for that month or so that they're performing their trade if if the hostel area is completely full of guests how many guests would you expect to have that information. One second, bear with me. Is this 62 So, Gary, that's him. We'd be taking the buck room out. We'd have 
32 total guest rooms, and then uh, there would be one leftover bunk room. Because we, we actually had a few bunk, bunk rooms proposed. So how many bunks are you suggesting per bunk room? How many hostel guests are we looking at? We've got three beds in the remaining bunk room. So but these would most likely be bunk beds. So we could, we could potentially sleep six guests. So six guests per room. We're looking at three no, levels. No, just, that's the one bunk room. Just one. Yeah, six guests just in that one bunk room. Everything else would be a private guest room. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. So six guests, that's it. No. So what? 33 plus six. 33 plus six. Yeah, one or two, one or two uh, guests. So what could if be the think, total, think total the occupancy? It's like the bunk room. And we, we see it as having the quality of what we're putting in the Hilton Garden Inn, uh, you know, a really nice queen bed, uh, you know, a nice uh, painting and, 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 you know, flooring and everything. And it would be where, you know, a couple coming through town and they, they want to spend the night, but they don't want to spend $175. Uh, but the room would be equivalent. It's just, a, it's just, it's just that it's a room. Be, you know, be no bathroom. No bathroom. Yeah. Yeah, to elaborate a little bit further because I have little plans here. Sure. With each room, you have a desk and a closet, and then the private guest baths you would would be uh, for one individual. So they would have a, a shower, a toilet, and a sink, and it would be uh, lockable. And then there'd be also a communal washing sink room which has four sinks so somebody just needs to brush their teeth before bed they've got access to a sink um, and they don't have to take up one of the, the washrooms is there anything that would state that you would have to have so many um restroom facilities or washrooms so the holiday it's not in the code Gotcha. It's, building, it's not in the code. Not in our code. Michael? Yeah, we would, we would have to look to the International Plumbing Code for that answer. Because I guess that, that's another question that arises. You know, if you're going to, if you can have how many, how many per floor? How many people could stay on one floor? Well, if it's three floors and there's 33 rooms, there's 12 people. Per floor. Yeah. So 22? If the bed's big enough? So just out of curiosity, how many how many washrooms or what did you state were for each level? So I'm looking at one proposed floor. We've got twenty two um, pillows, twenty two you know, beds that includes the bunk beds, and we are offering four individual bathrooms and then a communal washing room. What is a communal washing room? Just it's multiple sinks. Yeah. What's the definition of your washing room? Multiple sinks. We've got four sinks in the washing room. Okay, so just sinks. Just sinks, no toilets. Yeah. And this is a proposed plan. I mean, if if we really needed to increase the plumbing fixture count. We, we could find some space. Um, I'm looking at the communal washing room and there's a storage closet just adjacent to it. We could easily put more, two more sinks in there. It's, it's hard for me to be able to, I mean, I, I love the idea. I love the idea that we have a place where, you know, as a contractor, Knowing that when I got to take guys around, yes, that the expense that we got to do, we got to pay. Like I get it. Things like that are appealing to me. Um, I can see how that would work, but it, it's hard to be able to say yay to something 
that we have no code knowledge on. For me, I'm, again, I'm a contractor. There, I have to work by the ICC. I know this is not what we're talking about. The things of that nature are gonna come into play, but it's hard in this realm to be able to, to vote on something because obviously this is a big deal, the big part of this project, this hostile area. So it, it's, it's hard when we don't have anything in our city code that helps us determine. Yes, determine on what's good and what's bad, what if if it's a good fit or not, because there's nothing in our city code about the hostel. I think ADA is going to supersede all of the codes, and they're going to have to come out with yeah, answers for what happens if there's four people in a wheelchair uh, trying to use the sink car. Or not. You know, so now the room is, just went really uh, preliminary. none uh, because they're set the square. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Very cool just say. On the hotel. I think we have a great concept. Um, you know, I think that's where you know we can work along with the city to try to dial in the specifics as we as we go. I think today really the, the question is departments at ground level. Um, you know, we can, so I think we're going to subdivide that. It'll be on its own flat and and you know. I think as we go to develop that we can surely work close with planning on what we would do there. Again, because I think I asked earlier, and I'm not sure maybe you did try to answer, but I did. If I, if you did, I did. I did not hear it. And so the question that I asked earlier was: Is the hostel area incorporated with the funding from um, what was it, Chaffa or? Colorado Housing. Colorado Housing. Three. No, not, not for the apartments. Okay. Uh, the, the, it is for the EPA only. Uh, it's, it's all three buildings are covered by the asbestos mitigation. Uh, but the apartment grant application is, is, is a carve out of only the 1888 school and the 19. Okay. Um, my question, I think, has been answered, and uh, we just recently did a, a study in the city, and and the need for housing was in uh, two two bedroom house units, and and here the preponderance of your units are not two bedrooms; they're efficiencies and. Uh, and one bedroom apartments. So I guess my question is, are you locked in stone with the size of the units in the apartments? I think yes. Um, Michael, can I go back to you maybe on the uh, on the housing study? Because we're kind of based the, the needs, a lot of it based upon what we understood for the, for the housing. I think, you know, if we could have to go back to Department of Housing, but if we took a took a efficiency and turned it into another two bedroom, I think it's feasible. Um, if, if the mix needed to be varied a little bit, to, we're trying to build it up to suit the needs of the community. Good. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I have no more questions. Yeah. No, I have no more yeah. questions. Go ahead. Looking at the uh, at the AMIs, it would look 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 like you are targeting the higher end of that on the medium to moderate. You said correct. Well, what we want to be able to do is offer apartments to folks in that workforce range. The market's going to limit the rental rates. Um, so uh, it, the rental rates are more on the 70 to 80 percent AMI range, I think, right, Michael? It's kind of the market, and we're gonna have to price the market. We know we're nowhere close to the to the uh, uh, to the maximum. Price. Nowhere, nowhere. So, so what's, what's important for the planning, 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 planning commission to understand the breadth. AMI tables 
there's a difference between the price point and the the, 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 the income qualification standards. So what Gary is referring to is, is, is he's talking about two different things in the same sense. What's really important is that the heart space has an income qualification of 50% AMI or less. And that, I think, has included a lot of applicants that need housing uh, that are in those upper AMIs to access housing because it's a low income housing tax credit project. This project and the grant that these, these folks are seeking allows for up to 140% AMI. So the applicant and the income, or the person applying to, to rent out a home, could make up to roughly 74000 a year. Whereas if this wasn't a traditional affordable housing, that would be 34000 at 50% AMI, like our place was. So there's a, there's a big, there's a big difference between the grant funding that traditionally funds housing, which is both housing for credit, and grant that they're seeking through the Division of Housing, which is a one-time grant that allows for up to 140% AMI. When we, I know when the applicant originally came with the concept, there was a lot of issues with trying to do a life that project because it, it would it would insert another large 34 unit complex of low income housing. Uh, which was a concern of the applicant. And uh, up until this great opportunity, there really wasn't an opportunity that to increase AMI. The state has uh, it's called a transfer application housing grant. It's uh, a very competitive grant that uh, is allowing for these higher AMI that achieve the workforce. The correct number from the housing needs is 79 units that were needed at 120%, between 100 and 120%. I would have to dive into the group count, but uh, I don't think you're off on the two measures. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, my main concern is also what I think most of this people here in this commission is, it's the hostile units. In our code, we don't have nothing for hostile units. We're voting on something that we have no knowledge in our code. And you call it a hotel, it's not a hotel. So we can't vote on it as a hotel. I don't see how we can that's vote on right. it as a hostile unit either. You know, that's really not the, the, what's before the planning board. The only thing that we're asking for, because we know we're, we're a ways away on the hostile. I think the only thing we're asking for you to approve is ground level apartments. The, right. We're, we're, we're nowhere close to um, the hostel. You know, I, I, I'm sure we haven't researched everything on it, and we're not asking you to make a decision at this point on the hostel. I think that's more almost informational as to what you know what we're you know we're looking to do on the other side, and, and we're we're surely open to working working with planning to figure out how to make that work. So I'm going to ask uh, Chris, how do we uh, yeah. can we eliminate the hostile unit in this particular application and vote on the apartments? Well, the request is for a conditional use permit for the apartment ground level, level apartment. housing. And you can make a condition that you're approving for apartments um, and do further research on the other until more information comes in. But um, this is just for the apartments. Right. Because this allows them to go housing. in for granting right. this month. Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you can give me this information, but you're applying to the State Division of Housing for the transformation grant. Mm -hmm. And then you have your final studies and your structural, quarter one of 2023, construction documents and preparation, quarter two and quarter three of 2023, environmental remediation, Quarter three and quarter four. I suppose that's asbestos, but it hasn't been done already. 
Right. Post revelation construction and renovation 2024 and operation of the project in 2025. Just off the top of your head, do you think you're going to be able to keep that particular timeline? Kyle, I guess going back to you, I think when we looked at it, we looked what we felt we could achieve. What do you see? How do you make that? It, it is an aggressive timeline, but you know that, that's what we're, we're striving to achieve. Um, there are a few dominoes that need to fall before we can get into the next phase. Part of that's the uh, the abatement. Um, it's an old building that we have. Yeah, We've investigated, we've put together uh, as-built drawings, um, but because there's so much lead and asbestos in that in the building, we haven't been able to open up areas to, to really determine um, the, I guess, the, the, the structural integrity of, of some of the, the older building components. Um, we know that the plumbing, the mechanical and electrical, all needs to come out and be replaced. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a significant amount of work that, that needs to be done um, as part of this project, yeah. So they're going to have to redo the appointments. Okay, I guess that answers what I have. So, uh, if there's no other questions here for the commission, Staff, you have anything you want to add? You want to? Um, I just want to add that that you're not voting to approve a hostel here. Right. right. So. Okay. Please consider that. Okay. Anyone here to for or against this particular application or on virtual? Anybody on virtual or here, which I don't see any, for or against this particular application, this is for the apartments. A conditional use permit. No. Did you have something to say? <laughs> we can't understand. We can't understand you, sir. Sure. Is it feedback? <laughs> yeah, it's feedback. It's no way. Okay. Sounds like I need some pulse. I sound terrible. Okay. I'll close the hearing. Okay, now, Commission, you have to come up with the, what we're going to be voting on, which is the apartments for conditional use permit. So we'll have to separate that from the hostel. So whoever brings, yeah, the, brings forward, it's worded in a way that we are giving the giving or taking away conditional use permit for the apartments only and and not granted and the hostile units are not gone. Yeah, so just whoever wants to make the resident the I'll make the motion to approve their conditional use permit as written for the ground floor apartments only. Okay, did you everybody hear that? I did. Okay, the motion is to grant the conditional use permit for the apartments. Is that correct? Roll call. I'll second. Second by Sam? Sam Coker. Roll call. Leonie? Yes. Spain? Yes, but I would like, uh, <clears throat> we need to word this in such a way to explain why 
we're willing to allow this ground unit housing in this particular situation, but not in every situation after this. That's, that's my biggest concern, is that's what's good for one is good for all. We have to make sure to word this in such a way that we don't blanket the whole historical district with housing. So I, I'm for this. I, I wish you all the best of luck, but we have to be really How careful. How would you renew your <laughs> Well, I don't know how they would have to come. Uh -huh. Anybody that uh, would I think it's in front of us. I think we should, before we get into this. Uh, this situation? Okay, before we get it's into this, it's I would say it's not on Main. It's, it's, not, it's, a, yeah. it's, 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 it's not on Main. It's not a commercial. It's on, on Church Street, which is a low volume right. um, access corridor, and and we feel that that it would not be beneficial to enforce the retail requirement for first level. Housing. And there's no I think it's on a, when we get to these, it's on an individual basis. Situational. Yeah, it's individual basis would, would determine yeah. the way that we well, come forward. We just have to be careful not to set precedents. Right. Because once we set precedents, then we can be accused of being, you know. Okay, we have a, we have a motion. We have a first and a second. You want to continue, can I Chris? Proceed? Yep. All right. Spain was yes. Yes, I'm still there. Coker? Yes. Mat Matarano? Yes. Norris? Yes. Rollo? Yes. All right, the motion's approved. Okay, gentlemen. Good luck. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. And, Thank you very and, much. And, and, and on your, before we end this, before we end this, I would like to say, we would like to have a lot more information regarding the, the, the certain area that we, the hostile area. Sure. We would like in the future we'll to have some there. more information on it. And we're open to ideas as well. I mean, that's, uh, we're very early stages. Uh, All right. Thank you. Good luck. Do we need to send you a note thank you. to thank you. the thank you. city council as to I need to Michael, thank, thank you for all your help. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. I was going to ask for the presentation. I was going to ask for that. Is that an okay thing? Yes. Did they skip you? Oh. Yes. He wasn't calling me. Oh. You I'm so sorry. I'm going to call on the boat. Go ahead. John. I'm present and yes. <laughs> John, I'm so yes. sorry, your okay. video. Oh. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Thank you. Uh, annexation of a partial north of 815 East Garden Avenue, 22 Annexation-01 Todd Myers of Maverick and Andrew Jackson. Annexation of Los Angeles partial number 106-75510 owned by Andrew Jackson to be conveyed to Todd Myers of Maverick for the pr proposed planning of a minor subdivision for a proposed Maverick store and gas station. Staff. I'll stay here if that's okay. That's fine. Um, the applicant is Todd Myers of Maverick, Inc. And the current owner, which is Andrew Jackson, um, this project location is at 815 East Goddard Avenue, Trinidad, Colorado, in Los Animas County. Uh, the case number is 2022 Annex dash one Owner Ma of Maverick Inc. Todd Myers representative applied to annex and zone 1.851 acres one of three parcels of land and the proposed use is for a convenience store and gas station and this is located on the northwest quadrant of I-25 interchange at exit 15. Both uh, parcels are in the city of uh, Trinidad <coughs> city limits and one parcel is outside of the city limits just north of North Avenue and I-25. The address location is again 815 East Goddard Avenue and what the applicant is requesting is the portion of land that's north of North Avenue, which is
currently owned by Andrew Jackson and is approximately uh, block one. And if you have your map in front of you, it consists of the entire uh, block one except for lots one and two. This is a uh, this lots one and two has an existing residential house on it and the entry goes out into Denver Street. It does have a front entry but um, the uh, applicant or the residence has been notified. I have not heard any response from him as of yet. Um, and then also in this annex portion there's lots 24, 22, 23, and 24. Those lots have been conveyed to the city for future use of open space or whatever the city would like to do with it. Um, you, city staff has reviewed this, this request, and uh, the uh, one area of concern that um, engineering had is there's a major drainage area that's located right under the motel currently where the uh, Frontier Motel stands mm. that CDOT will have to approve for uh, drainage usage. And uh, CDOT has been notified and they have put forth their requirements for this project and um, Maverick has been very responsive as far as what, what the retaining pond needs to look like underneath this proposed gas station. Um, city staff, as far as utilities, uh, city water is available, sewer, gas, um, and three-phase electricity. The, there was quite a bit of discussion about the sewer because there is a uh, an area that uh, RVs can go and uh, drain a dump, station. a dump station. Thank you. That they can utilize for free. I we think of there's this will be uh, zoned as community commercial. And the proposed annex area will be community commercial as well. I ask that uh, the commission look at this application and uh, approve it or approve it with conditions or deny it. Uh, I have not had any adverse advice or uh, complaints regarding this application. Everything has been very positive thus far. Um, Todd Myers, are you on, online? Yes. So, okay. Todd Myers. Are you done? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, open it here. Okay, who is here representing? Who's here representing Maverick? Virtual? Got Todd Myers. I'm an employee with Maverick. And then I also have our civil engineer of record on the project is uh, Bryce Christensen with uh, Ken Lake Moore. He's also here to answer any questions. Maverick uh, is located in Salt Lake City, Utah. However, we have over 400 stores that are spread out over roughly a, a dozen states, including Colorado and New Mexico. We've uh, been looking at this site because it's, we've got to have a hole in our map. We, we don't have anything right in this area on the interstate until you get towards the north. Uh, Preble is going to have a couple of different stores and then Colorado Springs also have some stores. As we looked at this site where it's next to the interstate, we thought it would make a good business decision to put a store there. 
but also to have it be big enough that we could have some commercial uh, trucks that could also use the facility. And so how we have it laid out is in the front, there would be gas dispensers for the uh, vehicles, then you'd have a store, which would be roughly 6,000 square feet, and then behind the store, you would have an area for semis. Uh, this is not a truck stop. There is no overnight parking. It just allows for a couple of trucks in at a time. Uh, there's no lounges or showers in our buildings. We, we don't want the truck stop filled. And so it, it's really more of a convenient store as if you've seen any of our other stores in Colorado. The uh, property itself is, the, the primary property, the frontage, has a, an old hotel on it. This project, we would be purchasing that property, we would demolish that. However, that by itself is not large enough. And so that's why we're looking at the property behind that uh, would need to be annexed into the city so that we could develop a facility that we feel would best meet our customers' needs. Any questions? Mr. Myron? I don't have any. Mr. Emil? <coughs> Chris? I am concerned about that area and the road uh, being able to handle semis uh, with turnaround and uh, the congestion in the area. But other than that, I think it's a great idea. Mr. Coker? I, I don't have anything. Danielle? I have nothing. Mr. Norris? Um, my question is, I guess, maybe more for staff, but what do we do with uh, 22, 23, and 24? That's property set aside for, I mean, that is the top corner, right? That's Camellus and North. It's adjacent to the residential house. Uh, that's up to the city to okay. either sell off or you utilize for a park. Okay. Okay. This is part of a food desert, by the way. <laughs> I mean, yes, if you've been in any of our stores, we do have fresh food made items inside. And so, yeah, that's one of the reasons why I think it could be a, a, a very good business opportunity for us to be there. And I, I will mention Mavericks are all owned corporately and operated by the corporation. So we do not sell off any franchises. Uh, we do this because we want to control quality. Right. Okay. That's a good deal. I like if the I idea of being it. Am I allowed to share a screen? Um, the, only, the only question share? I... Share? Is that what you said, Mr. Myers? Yes. Can I share my screen? Yes. Oh. Right now, it's 
is here, this heavy dashed line. Um, we've, we've widened Denver a little bit to accommodate those, those trucks to get um, adequate access. Excellent. Okay. I don't know, staff, or the requirement for the drainage that you're talking about, is that going to be DOT done, or does the... It's according to their plans because it's in their area. Uh, that drainage is DOT. So that'll have to be, com so it will not be completed by Maverick? It, n it will have to be completed by Maverick according to DOT, DOT requirements. Right. Right. Yes, and so that currently that pipe goes uh, underneath the hotel. It will go in between the store and the fuel canopy out front with this design. And that pipe I mean, we're, we're still doing the engineering, but it's going to, yeah, right there at that blue line, shows you how it goes across the property, goes underneath the interstate. Um, the pipe itself is going to be between 60 and 84 inch diameter. So it is uh, a very large pipe. And as you guys know, there's an open channel ditch right now with water flowing southerly and then it hits this headwall of culvert and gets piped under Denver Street and then opens back up to a open channel ditch. And part of the approval process we're also having to do is to go through the Army Corps of Engineers and get a, uh, an analysis on this and to make sure it's, it doesn't fit the criteria for a wetland. Um, so we're doing a ditch study on this and we'll be processing that through the Army Corps of Engineers. I think that that spot right there by the road where the end of the blue line is in between the store and the road is going to end up having to be a runoff pond uh, and that really makes me worry about the pipeline running through a runoff pond whenever this could be a pretty deep hole that they make you dig. Uh, are y'all concerned about having to put a relift station in? Uh, at that area to, to pick that water back up and make it flow right again? Um, so, again, to Todd's point, we, we haven't really gone right. too deep yet into the engineering of this quite yet, but, um, you know, once we get a little further in the, in, through the annexation process, we can get into it. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll be analyzing this. Um, to my understanding, this is not a pond. It's just an area of refuge where water is collected over time before it's kind of made its way easterly mm -hmm. um, through to the, uh, the outfall to the east. So we'll, we'll definitely have to be looking. The, the uh, inverts we're particularly interested in are going to be the inverted culvert here and where we'll connect in the invert and the outfall and the sea dot and we'll, we'll, we're going to have a very large pipe here um, you know somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 to 84 inches um, to accommodate very high flows there so it'll be something with a reason hopefully a lift station or or something like that or a pump, pump station won't be necessary Thank you. Anybody else? The other thing I'd like to point out. Go so ahead. As far as the on site stormwater, you can see towards the uh, southeast corner, that area is a, an underground uh, storm tech type system so that, you know, we're not running our water off, you know, onto yeah, that street out there. Right. So then stormwater is going to end. We'll, we'll be following uh, the city standards for stormwater management. To right to it. Right to it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Jackson, the landowner, is also here. I was just going to ask him to come forward. Okay. Mr. Jackson, you want to come forward? Oh. Excuse me, I'm a victim in this case. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
I'm Andrew Jackson. I own the property that's trying to be annexed. In I'm going to talk up just a little bit. I own the property that is being annexed by Maverick. And uh, I think it's a very special uh, occasion to get rid of a complete eyesore in the neighborhood, in my opinion. I tried to buy the Frontier Motel. <laughs> I couldn't get it bought at any price. But they obviously did. My hat's off to them. And I think it would be a nice improvement for the city of Trinidad. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much. You better have one to come up? <laughs> no, I'm fine. Thank All you. All right. <laughs> Okay, uh, you don't want to get her started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to ask the question. Is there anyone here for or against this particular annexation? Seeing none, close the hearing. Commissioners? It looks good. I think it looks good. I think I think we need a motion. I think it'll clean that place up. Yes. I, I would like to make a, mo a motion to uh, allow an effort to proceed. Oh, to whatever. Yeah, We're doing the annexing annex. the parcel. Annexing. Yeah. Annexation of the parcel. Yeah. Second? Second. Second by Mr. Spain. Roll call. Leone? Yes. Spain? Yes, ma'am. Coker? Yes. Matarano? Yes. Norris? Yes. Rolo? Yes. Armillo? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for the update and all the information you gave us tonight. And uh, we wish you all the luck on your project. We, we look forward yep. to seeing that quarter. Yep, it's going to be great. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. We, we look forward to being part of the city. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are we going to go back to... Uh, to Michael, you are with? If he's on here, yes. He's there. Yeah, I, I, I apologize for the, uh, my audio wasn't working when you guys started the meeting. I can see everyone talking, but so, uh, there is somebody that I think has a phone on in the room that's probably an echo on the, on the back end of this. Uh, if I could share yeah, I can share the perfect. Uh, and oh, that's cool as promised, uh, we have uh, gotten the code uh, ready for your, your review. What we did do uh, is only attach Article 3, uh, which is the uh, application and review standards. The remainder of the code really has not changed beyond uh, that, except for that. Pending your review, once we go through the code on the 23rd, that will affect the review processes, subdivision, zoning for conditional use and variance, and will also affect uh, the stock variance code. So those will be changed uh, in material form uh, to reflect the review procedures that we have discussed. But my goal with this memo that you're uh, getting in your packet was to keep it very uh, focused on Article 3. Uh, like I said, there are no other material changes that we're uh, recommending uh, at this moment on the 23rd. There'll be some things like, like nice uh, hostel, um, uh, there's a couple definitions, uh, and there's some issues around accessory and uh, accessory structures and accessory dwelling units, uh, the way a couple things are awarded in there. I want to kind of separate that out into a separate meeting so that we uh, can really focus in on the review procedures uh, on the 23rd. So in the package, you'll see a memo. Uh, there is only one additional section that is not in Article 3 that's relevant, which is defining the set public notice terms. So I did copy that into my staff memo, but then after that, you'll see Article 3 uh, for your review. The other thing I wanted to point out is that we'll You'll see some highlights in the memo, or I'm sorry, in the actual article. Those highlights, the blue ones are for me so that I don't lose track of section.
significant numbers that are going to change once we actually re renumber the entire code. Uh, so please ignore the blue. Those are just for me to make sure I don't uh, forget mean it to, uh, to, to reference the session. And then you'll see some green. Uh, the green sections are really around, around, around. I'm actually coming to town on, on Friday to meet with the development review team to make sure that the review times that are cited in the code um, relate to what they're able to turn around and make sure that applicants um, are dealt with in a timely manner. Um, so that's why those are highlighted, uh, because they have yet to go through the development review process uh, with the staff. So I want to make sure you know that those, are, uh, those might change when I come back to you on the 21st based on recommendations from the staff. But with that, uh, I don't obviously want to go over this tonight, that's why we're meeting the 23rd, but based on your comments on the 23rd, that's going to substantially uh, kind of set the north arrow for me on how I'm going to address the uh, other articles in the code. Uh, beyond that, there's really some just minor condensing of the uh, certain sections, for instance, to certainly three different articles for a Board of Appeals, for the Planning and Zoning Commission, and Historic Preservation Commission. Those have all been moved under one article. Nothing changed in there, and none of your duties changed. They're just all the boards and commissions are in an article. Uh, definitions have all been condensed and moved to the, uh, there's three code sections, there's three different sections for you definitions. I put them all in article one uh, under definition. And then we'll go through those the additional potential changes in February and March. But really, Article Three is the focus of the discussion uh, on the twenty third. So it is the other thing is I, I am very mindful that it's, it's sixteen pages of code, uh, and so I didn't want to overload you with two hundred pages uh, for the meeting on the twenty third. So we could really remain focused on that. So that I just wanted to give an introduction to this is in your drive. Is that correct, Chris? Yes, yes, my foot is. Sorry, you guys are This is under your, uh, this will be in your drive under a code, um, whatever I named that file. Okay. It's, a, it's code something. Is there some more to this than this, which you handed out tonight? This is the review for review until okay. the work session. Okay. We still have questions between now and the 23rd. Is it appropriate for us to ask Michael questions, or do we have to wait and hold everything for the 23rd? Michael, it's more of a question for you. I'm, I'm fine with anyone asking questions regarding the code. Is that all right if they reach out and ask questions about this code, Michael? Or did you get? Or did you want to save questions until we meet on the twenty third? Did you hear what our questions were? Sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know how that muted, but they were asking if if there's any questions, would they be able to ask them? Prior. Well, prior, prior to, to the, the twenty, or should we save them for the twenty third? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you certainly can write an email to me, uh, but uh, and I'd be happy to chat on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Uh, so my email is easy. It's Michael at myrualplanner dot com. If you want to write that down, uh, and Chris would probably get to share that with them. Uh, if you want to just shoot me an email, I will say that. Normally, um, uh, if, if, it's just a, if it's a specific question you have, certainly you can ask me. But I, I do prefer to have you ask the questions while they're there, right. talk through this stuff. Right. But I certainly, I'm always available. I think that would service us uh, with the different questions that they have up here. You answer them at the same time we have the work session. I think that's right. Yeah. I think that would be appropriate at the time. To just make a list. Yes. That way everybody's on the same page. Okay. Anything else for us, Michael? Well, I'll be there on the 23rd. 23rd. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay, moving on. Uh, Chairman's report. I don't have no any report. Commissioner's report, sir. Mr. Marano. Is there any chance that Michael asked asking him about the hostel deal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we might. Huh? Yeah, we might. Yeah, we might. Chris? It'll come back. We're going to see Holy Trinity again. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. it's, it's, it's got to go through some other processes. Oh. So. I'm just wondering if there's a code out there someplace. <laughs> Mr. Mr. That's a good question. Mr. Spain? I'm good. It's it's Mr. 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 Poker. I forgot to address him. The goal is once you get through Article 3, I have that. So we have, I'm, I'm with it, I believe I'm on your contract until July. So February, March, and April will be the time when we can look at the other issues and that you have to vote. But I want to be real clear, though, with the public is I don't, when we start changing other things in the code, that affects entitlement, correct? And I don't want the, the public at large to be worried about individual code changes when we go through Article 3, because that is a process. Not, it's not just affect my my personal property at 202 C Street or whatever, you, you know what I mean? So I think that's really important to the public that they understand that what we're looking at on the 23rd is process, and then after you guys get through the process pieces, if you bless that, then what I want to do is open up the code to the other the other issues that you're seeing, and then we'll go through those individually. Uh, but that is a different to me about my company in Trinidad. I would be more tentative to specific changes to zone districts that might affect my personal property over the process. Does that make sense to the group? Yes. Perfect. Yep. Uh, so I just want to be able to do things out so that we don't we don't jumble it for the public. Okay. Thank you. Is it is this going to be an in person? Is he coming in person? Cool. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sometimes you can't understand that. It's terrible. Yes, it is. It's just yeah. awful. I I, I it understand that we're only be on here for for two minutes today, but because my audio didn't work, I guess they enjoyed the whole meeting. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Amino. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I just want to confirm. The 23rd is at 5.30? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good question. Anything else? Okay, uh, so, uh, commissioners, any commission report? Nope. Okay. Director. My report was the reminder of the work session, okay. which I will notice everyone, including our ego. I want to back up a little bit. Okay, go ahead. I want, there's two things that I want to bring up that I think one frustrates me. The other one is is the way that our city and our county, I, I believe it's time. I just want to bring this out to life. So number one is safety, right? Number one, my safety issue that I have is, and so I would like something to be brought up to the PD because this is impactful. We have an abundance of off-road vehicles with no turn signals, no brake lights, no mirrors, no, 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 all over our public streets. It is becoming a hazard. It is, if it is the people that don't have a driver's license, then if it's okay for them to do that, the question for me, is it okay for my, my 16 year old son who has to have a permit, can I just let him drive it and not be in trouble for that? I do think that it's time that we fix this issue because it's getting worse. There's more and more of these tote goats or whatever you want to call it all over Trinidad. I watched one come out from East Main JRs, one-handed, runs the light, and almost slammed into the curb. And he had he had no reason to be on that on that vehicle on our streets. It's not right. It's not licensed. It's not. It's not. It's not. We need to, we need to do something about that. Just like we pay attention to parking if, lines. If you hit that person, you're the one who's going to be exactly. In That's right. So this this is a, again, it's a safety issue. Right. We need to get this wrecked. We need to get it. It needs to be shed the light. We we know that everybody knows it, but it's time to do something about it. So there's that one. Okay. 
The second part of this is we as a community, we have a county and we have a city, right? We have, now this kind of goes more into codes and whatnot, building officials. We have two different entities. I don't know if they butt heads, but we have a great opportunity for our county and our city come together because they're living underneath the same code. But they're being looked at in two different ways. So you'll have guys that do this out here in the county because we have this inspector. I guess what I'm getting at is I think, I believe it's time. Our city is growing. We need to ensure that we have the right process due, meaning for our commercial buildings, we need to make sure that that, and, and, I, and I don't think that that's where our, our, our uh, line draws. I think the, um, the, the outsourced or the, I'm using the wrong word, the contracted inspection on commercial is doing well in the city, but it hasn't, has it taken that far to go to the county? I think it's time that we, we need to kind of come to a common ground. We should have a couple inspectors that can do the city and the county. We are growing. We, we need to have the right, we need to have like a regional. I'm, I believe that the having our state electrical inspector and, and our state plumbing, I believe that's good for our area because we're rural. But when it comes to our residential side of things, I think in a sense, I don't want to say we we flutter, but in a sense we do because we're on the same code, but it's looked at in two different directions. And is the code truly getting inspected properly? Are they, are they? I think the, can I enforce? Yes, please. Enforced. I think that's the word you're looking for. Well, I know, yes, it, I would say that enforced properly is good. But I also think that, you know, the way, because, and I love. Interpretation of inspections. I don't think the county right now has a proper. But they're on the 2018 code, Tony. Just like Trinidad. That's right. But I promise you, if you go out to a county place, if you took our city inspector and took him out to the county, he's going to find a bunch of stuff wrong. And if you bring this guy over here, he's going to find a bunch of stuff that he's like, why is it like this? They're not going to, because why? They don't understand the code. We need to have licensed uh, building officials, guys that know the code. That Because we, we're dealing, when we deal with our code, we're dealing with building and mechanical. Why? Because our electrical is governed by the state and our plumbing is governed by the state. So those two are already taken care of. Those are state inspections, right? right? But in here, again, is our code residentially being handled the way it's supposed to be? Is my question. I mean, it's not really, a it is a question. Is it being handled per the code? Are our inspectors the quality qual qualified quality? Th that's the next. That's the next section of that. And I believe the reason why I bring this up is because we are we are growing now. We we all know that we're going to see the residential part do this because of what's going on in the economy, and we have a lot of commercial stuff going on, right? So, but if, if that if that's the case. Why would we not try to try to nip this in the butt now for when everything opens back up? We need everybody needs to be on the same page. I don't care if you're in the county. I don't care if you're in the city. If we're both on the same code, the code's the code. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the code's the code. We need to enforce the code same here as we do here. It's knowledge. That's all I have to say. Um, I have something I'd like to add, and I'd like to send this to the code enforcement. <clears throat> I have, uh, I've been driving through our, our housing communities over here, and uh, every trash can receptacle is overflowing with furniture that has been disregarded. Uh, it's six foot tall, we've got couches, we got beds, we've got, and they're just piled everywhere. Uh, I, don't, I don't like that look for our city. Uh, we need to get code enforcement out there and get that cleaned up, whatever that means, our city deserves better. Did we not pass something that stated um, 
contractors could not utilize their properties for their equipment. Yes. Da 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 da. da. Yes. Has any of that is it being enforced? Because I found a new location that's up there behind the movie picture show house. It's for a company that transport medical people. But I, when I drove by that the other day, I was like, what is going on? There's like 15 cars in the backyard. I counted 20. Okay. <laughs> so here again, are we operating part of a business out of, out, of, out of this house? Which I know you can do, but can all the commercial vehicles be at this location. I think they have to be operational. Yeah. And so, I no, they're not. They're not. Supposed, your, I thought they were not supposed to have commercial vehicles in a residential neighborhood. Well, I'm just saying they should be operational and uh, have. Their so I can have a front end loader and drive it to my house, so long as I take that loader no. and. No. Keep it. <laughs> I think. Can but Chris is trying to say. I think Chris is talking about cars. Yeah, yeah. In other words, cars parked in somebody's backyard, they don't have no license. As long as they're licensed and insured, they can be there. It don't matter if they're but this is not a commercial right. But you're talking different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a Chris commercial is, operation. Chris is, Chris is talking that we're two different places. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah, this is a commercial operation, and there's a lot of cars back there. And, you know, I guess the question is are we enforcing that? Yeah. There's one, on, there's one on 6th Street. I don't know if you people went up there. It's on 6th Street on the corner of 6th and Ash. Looks like a bomb at that place. The trash dumpster is overflowing into the street. And there is a motor home parked over there on this side. Another motor home parked over here. Two or three pickups and a, some kind of an overhead trailer. And one of the residents called and said, is there any way that you could have somebody go up there and pick up that trash? Well, evidently, <laughs> I did call. They haven't paid their trash so nobody picks it up. So nobody picks it up. So I don't know where it's going. Huh. It's not going. That's, That's, right. Right. That's another thing uh, I've been talking about enforcement. The Enforce code, code enforcement isn't done anywhere in our town. You could drive, pick any section of town and drive around and there is properties almost on every block that are not they're not doing anything you know Chris uh, can you bring that can you bring that up and say that we had a little discussion as far as when we went into our commissioners report that uh, we were really interested in seeing that some of the code enforcement be done I can bring it up to um, our code enforcement officer. It. And I would. I, would I feel like. Letter. I feel like they're stepping up because a lot of people have been coming in with tickets, but it's been in regards to parking. And and which, which is the people PDC. parking in alleys that they thought were theirs, and they found found out no, they're not. So. I've called I can myself other things. about people living in garages that aren't suitable for human trash piled up in yards, oh, I mean. um, broken windows that are boarded up, people are living in it. Um, I mean, I've called, I can't tell you how many times I've kind of given up. But this kind of falls in line with, you know, here we have a court enforcement guy, right, that is also an inspector and he has a lot on his work plate. That this is part of the reason why I would bring up the part about how we look at everything, how we need the right, because we need an inspector to go inspect stuff. We need another guy that's going to handle code enforcement. You know, we, it, it is. I mean, to handle all this city and be able to drive around and issue this and, do, and to be on top of it, because otherwise we're going to do this every time. Every couple months we're going to have the same course, because we've done it in the past. We're gonna have the same complaints. That's why I bring this up because something needs to be done. You know, I know that it costs money to bring on different kinds of employees. Guess what? Sometimes we have to spend the money to take care of our people the right way. Safety too. It's a safety issue. It's all the way around. It becomes a life and safety issue. Maybe we need to ask the city manager to maybe hire an assistant to the code enforcement guy. 
Somebody that will will do it. But again, again, my and, and here you know, and I, when you look at the county and the city, you know, if we work together in this, you know, and one is doing more than you know, and we need a new vehicle. I mean, there's a lot of different ways we can handle this. But that's you know, if we work together for the greater good of our community, then why would we not take that leap of faith to join forces? And put our monies together, or to to make this place even better. I mean, it's a great place. We all know that. We say it every time when we close a meeting. They, it's they, a great place. I think to they be. tried that one time and it didn't work for them. Times have changed. I know. Times have changed. The city's changing. City gets more and more dense. You know, the density increases. We we need to be better to stewards of our land. Right. That's correct. I will bring it up um, to you know, our city manager and our code, code enforcement. When you bring it up to the city manager, I'd like you to to uh, have him draft a letter and send that to city council. I can ask him if, if it's possible. Yeah, right. I probably want to be with possible. you all just to... I mean, I'm talking... What, what do you guys think? I would love to sit down and have a chat. Like, I'm not opposed to that. Like, if we could sit down and have a little chat about some of our questions and concerns, because, you know, maybe that's... Or he can watch watch our Zoom if he's not already participating from, from another location. Okay. Perhaps he could... Uh, I'm just making um, an option if... If he could attend our work session, mm -hmm. perhaps y'all could air some of the the grievances that are on your plate. I'll bring them up to to him. When's the next city work session? It's on the twenty third. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, on our work session. On our work session. Oh, our work session. Yeah. Yeah. Have him come sit on our. Is yeah. that what you're saying? Come sit in on ours, and then after the work session, then we can kind of sure. well. Yeah, or maybe we could just bring this up before and then go into work session. If we're going uh, to do that, it's got to be uh, put out to the community that it'll be brought up in two weeks in advance, right? We can't take up a topic in our work session that hasn't been uh, messaged uh, out. Doesn't have There's no to. questions in a work session. We can't answer any questions. They can ask. But doesn't it have to be... Uh, anything that's on the agenda doesn't it have to be posted for the community two weeks prior to the meeting? Well, if it if it was a oh, you know if we came because up because it's a closed session, yeah. session. Okay, it's right. all right. But um, I'll go ahead and bring these up to them and okay, talk, let them know your concerns. Excellent. Anybody else? Something. Thank you. I have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Great. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth.